You may recall gonzo journalist Jimmy McDonough, one of the last to interview Tammy about her time with George. At one point, Tammy alleges that George came home from a bender. He threw a punch at her and missed. She got him into bed and he woke up and proceeded to go berserk. She said he pointed a rifle in her direction and fired at her and destroyed the contents of the house. I got there and he is wilder than a buck. That hair everywhere. Finally, we took the gun away from him and he said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I don't know why I did it. He ended up being dragged away in a straitjacket where he spent 10 days drying out. Tammy reached her end point. I have never seen a more terrified human being, but she, by golly, she did it. That was the end. Tammy wouldn't let him come home, and the marriage was over. The great storybook romance that Tammy dreamed of was no more. The split had ramifications beyond their love for each other and the children. Having Mr. and Mrs. Country Music break up, well, that's bad for business. The question about whether or not her career or his career might be hurt by their divorce. And of course, how to divide up the band. The Jones boys, real brothers, Don, Gary, and Arnie Adams, had been with George and Tammy from the beginning, alongside a rotating door of fellow Jones boys, musicians like singer-songwriter Johnny Paycheck and George's closest friend, songwriter and guitar player Peanut Montgomery. When I was a Jones boy traveling with him, I drank beer, you know. I never could understand how George could drink and sit for six or eight hours and never go to the bathroom, you know. He must have been wearing deep pins. <laughs> Sometimes he'd lock the bathroom door, you know, wouldn't let you use the bathroom. I broke him of that. I'd go back in his bedroom and pee on the floor. When the marriage ended, the situation on the road changed. How did the Jones boys end up with Tammy? That was in the divorce. Oh, okay, yeah. Tammy got custody of the band. <laughs> <laughs> the band all went with Tammy. The bus went with Tammy because she was the one that they could depend on and they actually liked her. In 1976, Tammy went back out on the road without George Jones for the first time in years. We're on the bus and Tammy said, what if nobody comes? We all fell out laughing because she thought they were coming to see George Jones. She was so scared every night. What if nobody shows up? What if they want Jones to be here? They kept nobody. screaming, where's George? And James Holly, he was the bass player. And he went up to the microphone and said, we don't know where George is, and he doesn't and either. And he doesn't either. <laughs> After the divorce, certain of George's fans wanted to vent their anger at Tammy. And she was, in some cases, ridiculed. She was pretty gutsy. She was real gutsy. If we could have just excluded men from her life, she'd still be alive and be the biggest star in the world. After Tammy left George, George was a mess. We'd hunt, we'd camp out. He just liked to do things. He threw out in the river one day and caught a little bitty brim. And he said, oh, Peanut said, the fish are out in the middle of the river. That was not a brim he caught. He caught a catfish about this long. Anyway, when he go fishing, it wind up costing him a fortune. He said, we gotta go get a boat. So they took off to the sporting goods place and bought a boat. And then he realized he had to have something to pull it with, so they went down to the Chevrolet place and bought a new truck. He sent me to the grocery store to get folding chairs and cooking pots and pans and food. And so we got the truck and the boat all together and pulled it down to the river. He'd dig a hole and put corn, uh, wrap it up in tinfoil, bury it in the ground and build a fire in there on coals and roast that corn. I don't know where he learned to do all this stuff. Hand ends. 